Pivot tables are a great tool in Excel that is used for summarizing large amounts of data into digestible information to simplify reporting and help us make quick decisions. In this video, we'll be explaining pivot tables in about 10 to 15 minutes. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so the first thing to make sure of when creating a pivot table is to make sure our data is in a tabular form. And that means that our rows would contain observations and our columns would be attributes for these observations. And you can see here that each category is in its own column. The second thing is to make sure that our data does not have any empty rows or columns and that our columns have headers, which is the case with the data that we currently have. Also, we need to make sure that our data doesn't contain any totals or subtotals as well. So if you have any totals or subtotals on your data, you need to make sure to remove them in order to prevent duplication on your calculations. And that is also the case with our data. It doesn't contain any totals or subtotals. So our data is good to go to create a pivot table based upon. And a good practice when creating a pivot table is to create an Excel table out of your data. You can do that by selecting any cell in your data and pressing Ctrl and T on your keyboard. This will create a dynamic Excel table on your data, which is going to be useful if you update your data with more rows, as it will automatically update your pivot table with the new rows of data. So let's click OK to create our table here and our table is created. If you don't like the coloring or the styling on your table that Excel applies by default, you can actually select any cell in your table here and then go to table design and then you can remove all styling by clicking on clear here and this will remove all the styling on your Excel table. It's also a good practice to give your Excel tables a name. So I'll give this table a name here under the table design tab here. I'll name it TBL sales. Now to create a pivot table, we can select any cell in our data and go to the insert tab on the ribbon and click on pivot table. And you can see here that it's distinguished our Excel table as the data source here and we're going to create it in a new worksheet. So I'm gonna press okay here. And as you can see here, our pivot table has been created. On the right, you will find the pivot table field Spain, which will contain a list of your pivot table fields. And the pivot table fields are actually the names of the column headers on your data set. Below the field Spain, you will find the different areas of your pivot table, the rows area, the columns area, the filters area, and the values area. And we'll speak about them later in this video. You also have some options for customizing the layout of your field Spain. If you click on this gear icon here, you can customize how the pivot table field Spain look. So you can have the field section and the area section stacked as is the default layout and the currently selected layout. You could also have the field section and the area section side by side like this. You could also have the field section only or the area section only in a two by two fashion, or you can also have the areas section only in a one by four layout like this. So as you can see here, you have multiple options for customizing the layout of your pivot table field Spain. So let's go back to the default option here, which is field section and area section stacked. You can also view or hide the pivot table field Spain here. If you go to the pivot table analyze tab here and then under field list, you can just toggle it on or off. And you can also move it if you hover a mouse here and get this cross shaped cursor here, you can just click and hold and move it around or you can also dock it back to the right hand side. All right, so let's speak about the different areas of the pivot table. When you drag a field to the row section, for example, you'll find here that the different values of that field, which in this case is the product field, are summarized across the rows here. So this is what it means to drag a field to the row section. If you drag a field, like the region field here, click and drag to the columns section here, you find that the values are summarized across the columns here. And you will notice as well that there is no duplication of the values. And this is what it means to summarize the data. And this is the intention of creating a pivot table is to summarize the data. So you can see here to help summarize the data, you have no duplicates on your values. Although these values are duplicated on your data set, the pivot table gives you the values without duplication. So what does the summation of values area do? Well, as its name implies, it sums values. 
And so we need to give it a field that has values, that has numbers, such as the sales amount, for example. So drag and drop the sales amount to the summation of values section. And you can see here that the default option here when dragging a field to the summation of values is to actually sum the values on that field. You can actually change the aggregation. So click on it and go to value field settings and you can do average instead of sum. You can do max or min or count. So you can see here, this is where you can change the type of aggregation done here on the submission of values section. You will also notice here that the values we have are not formatted in any way or form. It's a bit difficult to read these numbers. And since these numbers are actually a currency, so it's better to have them in a currency form. And to have them as currency, we can click on number format and then we can go to currency and we can change the currency to, let's say, US dollars here. And let's make it without any decimal places and click OK and click OK again. And as you can see here, we managed to give them a currency number formatting. So this way, it's actually easier to read the numbers and it's clearer because they're now uh, looking like a currency. Remember, number formatting does not change the value of a number. It just changes how the number looks. You also notice that we have some grand totals here. So we have some grand totals for the rows and we have grand totals for the columns as well here. And to toggle the grand totals on or off and control them, you can just select any cell in your pivot table and then go to the design tab here on the ribbon. And here you can make the grand totals off for rows or columns or make them on for both rows and columns or make them on for rows only or make them on for columns only. So this is where you can control your grand totals. You can also control your subtotals from this menu as well. All right. So we've spoken about the rows area, the columns area and the values area. So what does the filters area do? Well, the filters area applies a filter to your pivot table before any of these values get calculated. So if we drag and drop, for example, the vendor to the filters area, you can see here that we can filter by any of our vendors here. So let's filter by Cyber Edge, for example. And as you can see here, we managed to filter our data by one of the vendors. You can also select multiple items. So if you click here, you can actually select multiple vendors at the same time. And now our data is filtered by multiple items. There is also another way that creates filters for your data and is actually a better looking way, which is to insert a slicer. So if you go here to the insert tab on the ribbon while selecting a cell in your pivot table, you click on slicer and you can select the vendor here, for example, to insert a slicer for and click OK. And now you have this better looking filter that acts just like adding a field to the filter section. So inserting a field in a slicer is equivalent to having that field in the filter section. So you can select any one item here when using a slicer to filter your data with, and you can select multiple non-contiguous items by holding control on your keyboard and then selecting, and this will select multiple contiguous or non-contiguous items. You can also select multiple contiguous items by selecting the first item and holding shift on your keyboard and then selecting the last item here. And now we've selected multiple contiguous items. Now let's remove the region from the columns area here. And let's say that we need to do a percentage of sales calculation. So what we can do is to insert another instance here of the sales amount to the value section here. And then we can click on it, go to value field settings, and then go to show values as here. And we can select percentage of grand total here. We can also change the name of the field here, how the field name appears if we just change it from here. So we can name it percentage of sales amount here and click OK. And as you can see here, now it's been changed. And to change the name of that one as well, another way to change it is to change it from the formula bar here. So 
if we want this to be called sales amount and we just make it sales amount or press enter, you can see here that there is a problem, which is that the pivot table field name already exists. And this is because there's already a field or a column on your source data here that is named sales amount. So you can't name it sales amount, the exact same name, but we can get around that by putting a space before it here and pressing enter. And as you can see here now, it looks like sales amount. It's just sales amount with a space before it. So let's also sort our sales results in descending order to make reading the data easier and right clicking can solve a lot of problems on pivot tables. So if you right click here and then go to sort and then click on sort largest to smallest, you can see here that we managed to sort our sales results in descending order. Now, what if we add more data to our pivot table data source? And this is where the benefits of using Excel tables manifest. So if we go back to our data here and add another row of data, so I'll just copy the last one here and paste it, and I'll just change the product here to be a PC. This is a product that is not available in our data. I'll change the vendor to Excel Bonanza, and this is also a vendor that we didn't have, and then go back to our pivot table here. You'll see here that the data has not been updated yet on our pivot table, and what we need to do it in order to update it, we can just right click and click on refresh, or we can go to data and then refresh all or refresh and the difference is that refresh all will refresh all the different data sources in your workbook and refresh will just refresh the pivot tables with the same data source as the one you're using it on. So you can see here that Excel Bonanza as a vendor has appeared and we also have our PC product here updated on our pivot table. So you can see here that when you add more data to your pivot table data source, you need to make sure to refresh it. Now, if we replace our product column with our date column here, you'll find that we have multiple levels of grouping added to our pivot table. And you can see here that we can drill down through different groupings. So now we're grouped by quarter and here we're grouped by month and then the date. And to control the grouping, we can right click here and click on group. And here we can choose the different levels of grouping on our pivot table. So we can, for example, choose to group by years and quarters only. So deselect months and then make sure to select quarters and years and click OK. And now we have the grouping done by years and quarters only. One more option I want to demonstrate is the analyzed data option. So here, if you select your source data and then under the home tab, you go to analyze data. You can see here that this is going to use Excel's AI capabilities in order to analyze the data in Excel. So you can ask a question. So for example, what is the vendor with the highest sales, for example, and you can see here that it's answered your question, even though I had a typo as well on my question, it managed to understand the question and it's giving you an answer here that urban tech has the highest sales and you can even insert a pivot table that shows that. So this is a useful tool if you want some AI help, but make sure to validate your results because AI does make mistakes. And if you'd like to take your pivot table game to the next level, Make sure to check my Excel Power Pivot for beginner's course where you learn how to put your pivot tables on steroids by using DAX formulas to perform complex calculations that are not possible using regular pivot tables. I will leave you the link to the course with a special discount down below in the description. So this concludes our video today. We hope that we managed to explain pivot tables in the shortest amount of time possible. So if you like that video, please make sure to give it a like and share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified with all future videos. And please make sure to also follow us on social media. You'll find all the links down below in the description. Thank you so much and I'll see you on the next one.